In this video, I'll be discussing how to interpret the genetic code and how to translate an mRNA sequence into an amino acid sequence. In the cell, the instructions for building a protein are located within the DNA in the form of a specific sequence of nucleotides. Through the process of transcription, this sequence of nucleotides in a gene is transcribed or copied into an RNA form to make a molecule of messenger RNA. In the process of translation, translation machinery, including a ribosome and tRNA molecules, read the mRNA molecule and translate the nucleotide language into a sequence of amino acids linked together to form a polypeptide. Once constructed, the polypeptide will fold into a protein. So how do we go from instructions that are a sequence of nucleotides into a chain of amino acids that will eventually fold into a protein? The answer is in the codon. We interpret mRNA in a series of three nucleotides at a time called a codon. A single codon will correspond to a specific amino acid. So we move along an mRNA strand reading groups of three nucleotides at a time, each corresponding to a specific amino acid. We complete this process of translation using the genetic code. So in this chart, we can see every possible codon nucleotide combination and the amino acid each codon corresponds to. The amino acids in this chart are listed using their three-letter codes. For example, MET, M-E-T, is the three-letter code for methionine, an amino acid. Now this code is the same code used in translation for all living organisms. In this way, the code you're seeing here is universal. So when we look at this chart, we notice a few things. First, the code is redundant. Multiple different codons will code for the same amino acid. Here you can see that the codons UUU and UUC both will code for the amino acid PHE, which is phenylalanine. We also notice that the code is non-ambiguous. Each codon codes for one and only one amino acid. There's no question which amino acid is going to be coded for by a single specific codon in the mRNA. A few other things you may notice in this genetic code is that we have start and stop codons that signal the beginning and the end of the coding portion of the mRNA strand. As you scan an mRNA molecule, the translation will not start until you find a start codon, which is always the codon AUG, coding for methionine. This means that every polypeptide coming out of translation will have methionine as its first amino acid. This methionine may be removed before the protein folds. From the start codon, you move through the mRNA, reading and translating the codons one after another until you find one of these three stop codons. The stop codons signal the end of the coding portion of the mRNA, and is the end of translation. Unlike the start codon, the stop codons don't code for an amino acid. So let's do a little translating practice. Here we have an mRNA molecule. To translate it into a polypeptide, I'll scan for the start codon, then I'll consult my chart for all the remaining codons until I reach the stop codon. So I scan, I find the start codon AUG, which, if I consult my chart, codes for the amino acid MET, or methionine. I then move to the next codon, CCG, which codes for the amino acid PRO, which is proline. Then we have CGA, coding for arginine, and GUG, coding for valine. Then UCG, coding for serine. And then finally we hit UGA, which does not code for an amino acid. It's simply a stop codon signaling the end of translation. Any codon after the stop codon does not get translated. At this point, I've translated the full mRNA molecules into a sequence of amino acids that will make up a polypeptide that will then be modified and folded into a protein to use in the cell. In reality, the mRNA molecule will be much longer than this, with many more codons, 
resulting in a polypeptide chain that contains many more amino acids. For example, the enzyme Rubisco, which is used in photosynthesis, is made up of around 500 amino acids. If you're interested in how the cell goes through this process of translation, please see my video on translation. Please also check out my video on mutation if you're interested in how changes in the DNA can cause structural changes in polypeptides and in proteins.